to today's daily walk in wisdom. We've been a couple of days already in the heavenly vision and we're holding on in here for a couple more days. Uh, much to learn. The Shulamites talking. Song of Songs, chapter 3, verses 6 to 11. Who is this that comes up from the desert like pillars of smoke, perfumed with myrrh and incense and frankincense and made from all the powders of the merchant? Behold his beard, it's Solomon's, escorted by 60 warriors, the noblest of Israel, all of them wearing the sword, all experts in war, each with his sword at his side, prepared for the terrors of the night. King Solomon made for himself the chariot. He made it of wood from Lebanon. Its posts he made of silver, its base of gold, its covering of purple, the midst of it being paved with love for the daughters of Jerusalem. Come out, you daughters of Zion, and look at King Solomon wearing the crown, the crown with which his mother crowned him on the day of his wedding the day his heart rejoiced. Let's look at the detail here. Look at the detail. Solomon's carriage perfumed with myrrh and frankincense escorted by 60 of the noblest warriors in Israel, experts in the art of war, swords sheathed at their side, carriage posts of silver, foundation of gold covered with a curtain of purple and notably paved with love. It's in the details. It's in the details that we find the intricacies of God's handiwork. You might be generally good. You know, they say about people, oh, he's a good person or she's a good person. Surely, surely uh, they'll make it to heaven. They're a, generally a good person. Uh, but being generally good, good enough, isn't enough for God. God's goodness has to penetrate all the way through to the finest detail. Now, while they are already married, this is where the marriage is made public. It's the wedding procession. Now that she has put the major obstacles to their relationship behind her, the Shulamite is able to share with the king in his outward display of glory. She calls the attention of others to witness the majesty of the king. And when she does that, she induces a great change in those who previously were less committed. She comes out of the wilderness, we're told. She comes out of the wilderness, it said, Who is this that comes up out from the desert like pillars of smoke? She comes out of the wilderness. The wilderness is the land of temptation, the place of wandering. It's a wild and unforgiving place. Israel spent 40 years wandering in the wilderness. The wilderness bordered Egypt, which is a type of the world. So her previous refusal to obey the king had made the Shulamite a neighbor of the world. Now she leaves the place, the wilderness. Now she leaves the place, the places of aimless futility and senseless circuits in the sands of selfishness and chooses purpose. It says that it comes like pillars of smoke. Now the pillar of cloud is the manifestation of God's Shekinah glory and it guided and protected Israel in the wilderness. And because the Shulamite identifies with the king, his glory now becomes hers. She is coming out of her regression as a totally new woman with a new attitude and a new sensitivity and a new ability. The pillar of revelation speaks of the dependability of an overcomer. Because she's overcome her regression. And so now she is a pillar, a pillar, pillar of smoke, a pillar in God's house speaks of the dependability of an overcomer. 
So the Shulamite had failed the king. Well, we all fail God. We all fail one another. We all fail. All of us are. Part of the human condition is that we fail. It's just been our lot since the fall. However, however, just because you fail doesn't make you a failure. That does not define you. A true overcomer will rise up and leave their failure behind to grow in grace and strength. And pillar of smoke. So the smoke is caused by the reaction of fire. It's a symbol of the Holy Spirit's refining work as he burns up the chaff and irrelevant aspects of our religion, of our man-made lifestyle. So her past failure is burnt away and she's totally absorbed in God's Shekinah glory. And then it talks about being perfumed with myrrh and frankincense and all the powders of the merchant. So through her association with the king, the Shulamite becomes affected by his fragrance. The fragrance of his scent is upon her. Myrrh is mentioned first, reinforcing the necessity of the cross in our lives. The suffering of and the suffering and death of Christ is foundational to our lives as Christians. Further, we're told to take up our cross daily. Then comes the frankincense. The fragrance of frankincense is released through the application of fire. We maintain our relationship with Jesus through prayer, but not religious prayer, not vacillating prayer, not paltry prayers, not boring religious prayers. The prayer that satisfy, satisfies Christ must be effectual and fervent, must be a prayer that is on fire. So she's now under the pillar of smoke and his fire is working in her to produce a fervent relationship rather than one that is lukewarm. Then it talks about all the powders of the merchant. So the emphasis here is not so much on the types of spices, but the merchant. A merchant sells rather than gives. Solomon was accustomed to trading in distant lands. He didn't personally produce spices. He bought them. So this is emphasizing Jesus as the merchant who sold all he had in order to ransom the lost. Jesus, who sold everything that he had because of his love for the church, that he gave himself for her, that he might present it to himself, a glorious church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, and that it should be holy and without blemish. So the tapestry of the heavenly vision, therefore, is woven with five strands. First, there's your purpose. Secondly, the glory of God. Third comes the cross, fourth the fire of God, and then there is Jesus selling everything to make you his own. In other words, you're bought with a price and you're no longer your own. And these five strands weave together, all of them together, all of them woven to form the fabric of your life with God, the bride and the bridegroom coming up out of the wilderness together, the marriage procession, the marriage, wedding marriage procession between us and Jesus. Yes, wonderful. And that's the wisdom from the Song of Songs for us today. God bless you. We'll see you again tomorrow for more wisdom out of the Song of Songs.